Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's the Pop Geek here, joined by... What up, guys? It's David. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> that was a guy from Thor. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is a dreadful impression. <laughs> I know, that's why I was practicing it up the hill, up the road, to see if I could get a better oh, one. Oh, is that what you were doing? I was trying, it was terrible. <laughs> it is terrible, it is. and you're cutting into the other person's time, and introducing... Paul. He didn't need much. Well, didn't, yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Hash, <laughs> hashtag is Paul. Most succinct intro ever. Yeah. It's Paul. 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 <laughs> See, it's just a sound bite. Paul. Just, yeah. Just plain vanilla. But, <laughs> it's a shorter hashtag than It's better than my attempt at sprinkles in the vanilla in a minute. Plain vanilla, that can be his nickname. Plain vanilla. Go. Plain vanilla. That's like an oxymoron. That's how fucking dangerous you are. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Killer Vanilla. Killer, Killer oh, Vanilla. It's, it's, it's evolving. <laughs> okay, you just get one name, right? Fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. You know the buff geek alpha male, what his real name is as well, are you? Yeah. <laughs> what his three names? There's a couple other names that I go by. Yeah, dickhead. So, oh, <laughs> I like Big Papa. <laughs> and he likes you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No pardon. Yeah, I do. I like that one too. Mm-hmm. You know, you... Some of those ladies, they know. <laughs> they've 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 spent some time with Big Papa. Yes, they have. Yes, you have. I'm talking to you. Yeah, I know. I remember. You didn't think I remember, but I remember. Steve, stop it. He's fucking losing his chain of thought here. What? <clears throat> anyway, so we're here to talk about a film we just watched, just which would be Star Wars: Attack of the. No. Don't I no. suffered through an hour of the. Wait, no, no, oh. sorry, much. Shut- no, no, that's... Suffered through an hour of Star Wars. Star Wars Attack of the Clones. The first hour, I wanted to poke myself in the eyes repeatedly. Mostly when Hayden Christensen talked, but occasionally when Obi Wan talked. Still well. a better actor than Charlie Hunnam. I... No, he's not. He's way better. No, he's he's not. an amazing actor when he's given the right support. But we're not talking about that film. We were meant to be doing a podcast on that film. But as it so happens for the month of October, it seems whatever we schedule cannot happen. It was too shit. So we're not only doing the podcast on a Tuesday, randomly. Steve looks really different. <laughs> um, Ian's invisible. That's that, that was the original lineup, yeah? Like on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, It's like, oh, oh, we can all make it. Yay! And then it was like, nah, nah, can't make it, can't make it. And then you're like, oh, by the way. Well, you tell them how you told me what was happening oh, tonight. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I, we were going to be doing Star Wars like I said and then suddenly realised when Steve took a half day from work to go see Thor middle of the day that Thor was out oh, today are you meant to say that about him taking a half day from work yeah he took a holiday oh okay yeah, he didn't just say oh I don't feel well <coughs> can I go home yeah yeah when you go go take care <laughs> Ragnarok <laughs> <laughs> I'm fairly sure his bosses don't listen to these podcasts as well but you never know they well, may uh, this is this is daily staple of everybody's life in the local area what, who, who does Steve report to? There's no way. <laughs> well, this, yeah, is, this is about 50,000 views on Two. average. Wait, no, that. To the millions and millions <laughs> of people who don't listen to this podcast. <laughs> don't include them. This oh, is okay. for this is for the, the select group that do. So anyway, I realised that Thor was out today. And I says to, I messaged them and I says, want to go see Thor? Ah, but we're doing Star Wars. So I sent him a picture of Kate Blanchett as Hella. And he's like, I'm sold. <laughs> I'll get the tickets. <laughs> I, was, I was straight away. You, the picture, you, you sent a gif of her holding the hammer and yeah. it's shaking. And I'm like, oh my God, just finished jerking it off. <laughs> like, it, it felt like she was just teasing it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, it's got to explode. It's got to explode. Come on, baby. Do it for me. It's do, it, gonna... do it for oh. Do it for Big Papa. <laughs> 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 so those tickets you did get as well by the way I'm sure they were not legit like there was something <laughs> wrong with the organisation in that row yeah like, the number I of think those two snuck in that row well I think those two snuck the in the two at the end the, the young two no the the one that you guys evicted from our seats, the, the and then they got the, evicted from other seats. The woman with the cane. Aye. Aye. Well, I think they just chose they just chose seats they wanted to sit in, Rather right? Than the and scheduled. and Daniel was like, "Oh, by the way, I did kick someone out of the seats," and I'm like, "Oh, good man, good man." So it was a woman with a cane, and I'm like, "Well, everyone's equal." 
<laughs> Everyone's equal now, pretty sure. And also, just for so you get an idea where we were, we were sitting at the very back of the top of the steps, so she couldn't have been. It wouldn't have been that tough for her to get up there because why would you do that, right? Yeah, You've got seats exactly. at the front for people that have maybe some physical problems or whatever. Yeah, or but, just fat. But at the end of the day, the end of the day, we're all the same. I don't care that I'm super fit and someone else isn't. I'm I'm going to sit where I want to sit, where I've paid to sit, where I've chosen to sit, where I went early to make that choice. Yeah, it, it kind of reminds me because we're that. all the fucking same. Yeah, no one is. We're all the same, but we're all also special. We're all also very that special. Says I'm special. Yes, but he did not call you a man because you are not that. Okay. This is time. I have got fourteen other classifications I could be. Exactly. So have some of that. But no, I'm saying I'll sit wherever I want. Kind of reminds me of the joke of a uh, where's the gorilla sitting in the cinema, <laughs> whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to kick someone out of the seats. I was kind of waiting. There's, you know, there's like a whole bunch of people kind of standing at the e- at the edge of the row right. where I was sitting, kind of tr- looking down the row and trying to figure stuff. I was like, go on, just ask me. Just ask me. I'm going to show you my ticket. Tell you fuck <laughs> off. I had difficulty finding my seat because you guys were in eight, nine, ten, and you'd think it would be seat eleven next. It was seat eleven. Yeah, it was seat seventeen. And oh, what? Then- so the seat numbers went 8, 9, 10, 17, 12, 13, 14, 15. You did not. Yeah. And I was just like, well, I'll just... Well, I'm sorry, because I chose 8, 9, 10, 11, so you, 11, 12, so you're in someone else's seat. That's the you, ones that we kicked that. the women with that came on to. I should have Maybe 17's like this, this, the... I was going to say special seat, but I meant like the... Uh, it was yeah, tonight. It was. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, it's, would it have been... So were you in 17 or were you in... Se- you were in 17. I was in 17. Oh, I see what you did there. You made fun of him saying he's... Okay, yeah. He's taken ownership of that joke that you were making a minute ago and passed it on to someone else now. Nice. Trying to reclaim the joke. Yes. Well, I mean, like I said to you guys, I don't think I'm going to bother paying for tickets anymore at that cinema that we go to because just fucking wander in and no one seems to give a shit, do they? Uh, no one checked out tickets. I mean, so you guys stood and hung out um, leaning on the glass case that houses Star Wars stuff and no one told you anything about nothing. No, I've and then seen I walk got in, fingerprints all over it and everything. Mm-hmm. I walk in, hand out the, the contraband, which was just actually four pieces of, of... It was a piece of A4 paper that I'd ripped into four pieces, and um, I've just pocketed some of your money. Thank you. And, um, yeah, I never actually got tickets in there. That's so, fine. I've so. seen on my ticket it said zero pounds and zero pence. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that meerkat code. I also sold that to someone else for three pounds. There we go. So I made about 24 pounds today. That's all right. That's, that's good, eh? That's not bad hawking. Ah, yeah. that's good. Go from Industrious. Talking to talking about Let's go Thor. To talking. Yeah, yeah, so this will be the Thor Ragnarok. Spoiler review. Man, he's got the horn tonight. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just Kate Blanchett. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Kate, Blan- oh. Kate Blanchett seems to get better with age. It was the, when she had the hair. See, when she had that thing on her head, it, it lost a bit of it, but when she had the hair. I can still manage it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still easily manage it, but you probably, like... The scene she first appears there, and she's standing all fucking sexy-like, and you're just like, oh. She said something that kind of pissed me off today, though. Before, after, or during the film? Before the film. Right. Well, not pissed me off, but she said it's something... Really piss me off. She said something. I, I, I was trying to find her Twitter, because I, I wanted to hassle her. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, tag her in it, and yeah. say what a good job she did. And, um, Just post pictures of that Jeff over and over and over again. <laughs> oh yes, I should. Um, but I, I shouldn't have one. But it did say like a little excerpt, as the as it often does, about whoever you're searching for, and it said something like um, a quote from her saying, uh, "A woman can dress. A woman can dress sexy because she likes to feel sexy, but that does not mean it's an invitation." And I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> I dress you... sexy. It is an invitation. <laughs> this is... Fucking doesn't work for me. I mean, if a girl turns up on a date dressed in a certain way, that's a very good indicator of how she feels about either you or what she wants from you or this date to represent. Okay. So is that any part of thought at all? 
I'm just, no, I'm just. But on this topic, there is a video you should watch online <laughs> from a channel. Called is this Ca- the one? How to tell if she's into you? How to, yeah, from casually explained. Is she into you? <laughs> it is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Go check that yeah, out. Check explain. that out. That is excellent. <laughs> it was just, it was just kind of for me that comment was borderlining on uh, stupidity. It's just, it's, it's, it's common idea it's nothing stand out if i'm honest that it can't that it can't mean anything else i mean yeah you it's both it's both at the same time and can be used and it can be used for for either i think used for evil is what i thought you were going to say that well (laughs) it's just kind of a little bit bullshit where if a woman wants to attract you she's going to dress sexy but then if she then decides that she doesn't... But there's a difference between attracting someone and wanting to get penetrated by them. Well, I suppose she was maybe meaning it in the raper sense. Yes. Potent, sort of. But but it isn't at, but she didn't actually say that. No, no. People tend not to use the rape word publicly. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. They're, they're quite nervous of it. It's like cunt and... Uh... There's only a few words that have got any power left to them. Yep. And most of them you can't really say. No. Love. Mm-hmm. Still, still means something. Cunt. Mm. Really bothers some people. Rape. It's a little, it's a little bit lower. And you, you, you guys know the other one. Incest. No, that's fine. All right. Okay. That's that's fine. I, I, I tell you what, if I was thought, I'd be like, mm, incest. <laughs> <laughs> so. Nigger is bad, but nig a is okay. Oh, now we're getting into and this. Only this is going to be the buff geek mad. Ragnarok soon. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to figure something out here. Like yeah. that—that is the—that is the other word that—that's the top three. That was four. Yeah, but rape can probably be cut. That's that's like a like an honorary mention, you know. Rape's not that important. <laughs> In terms of how powerful the word is, it's not got the same power as the other three. So I tell you what. See the opener in Thor where the music and everything kicks in. <laughs> and he, uh, it's just after he gets out the chains. Oh man, see when he's spinning around in those chains. Oh, that was... Excellent. <laughs> it set, that sets the tone for yeah. the entire film. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. yeah, that is fantastic. We are assuming that you guys have seen the film, so we're not really going to go too deep into They heard the spoiler horn. Yeah, and we're not really going to go too deep into the plot either. We're going to talk about it like you know what we're talking about. I think that's. I want to talk about more controversial things. Yes, I know, but that's not why we're here. Just to make you smile a little bit. the spoiler horn. Let's just go. (laughs) Waders on. Straight in there. You're right, though. The way the chain was spinning around, he's like, hold on. Yeah, yeah. I swear I'm not spinning this and all that sort of stuff. It's like, yeah, this is setting the tone. And the tone stayed throughout the film. Oh, it had a very Guardians. Oh, it, it was like Thor's it was like Guardians as opposed to Guardians Two. They got the comedy right again on this yeah. one. It was just did, enough. Did you not enjoy Guardians Two then? Guardians Two was mm. a sort of almost like a replication of the first one, with it cranked up a bit, and yeah. you really enjoyed it. But there was nothing new from the humor. Yeah, it was all That's, the old. The old it's old. not even that it wasn't new. It was for me. It was more that it was, um, milked. No, it, it was like we need to put more jokes in. Where's the jokes? Bring me the jokes. Mm-hmm. Like just like they didn't seem to. They were abrasive. It was jokes for jokes' sake, as opposed to the cleverness that mm. you'd expect. Kind of like Frankie Boyle. Maybe mm-hmm. is that the guy with the? He swears a lot. Yeah, uh, he just swears a lot and says controversial things in a bit to be funny, but he's really actually. Who are we talking about here, Frankie Boyle or me? Ah, both. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> so with Thor, though, did you think they got the balance? Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It was so enjoyable. So enjoyable. There was like there was no dry moments because there was either a good bit of action or there was the humour. And the chemistry to keep it going. The chemistry between them all was fantastic. Yeah, really good. Thor and Loki are just fantastic together, aren't they? Loki's really amazing. Brilliant. I, um, I mean, you you actually can't imagine a Thor film without Loki. Well, that almost happened. 
the Dark World wasn't meant to have Loki in it. Mm. And then they rewrote it and reshot bits to bring him into yeah, it. And it's the weakest of the Thor films yeah. for me. Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's not. Dark World is... <clears throat> one of the weakest MCU films. Yeah, I mean, the the imagery and the cast and all that kind of stuff is good, but it's just not executed very well. And that end fight scene, it, the, they tried to get some funny parts in the end fight scene with... Um, Eccleston's character, the what, the Dark Gnome or whatever he was called, uh, Dark Elf, <clears throat> Malekith. Malekith, yes. Thank you. That would have driven me nuts. And the fun, it's like they, you know, they went back and did a couple of reshoots, yeah, and tried to punch it up a little bit, and it felt that same way Guardians Two felt, like they, yeah, they just, we need humor, but we didn't quite get it right. That they just got the humor perfect in this. It's it's one of these films, The Dark World, where. Like there's there's some things that you watch, like Game of Thrones, as it's been having its demise, and particularly the latter end of season seven. I thought, yeah, it didn't hit the mark. But if you'd done X, Y, and Z, mm. you would have done. Mm. With the Dark World, I cannot pinpoint what you could have done to turn that movie around. Like there's just, there's just so there's something that, missing, like but it's just so much missing that I, I can't just say, oh, if you do this and if you do this, you know, you'd you'd be tearing up huge swathes of the script I think to turn that round I think I think you have the Coney's to set it more off of Midgard mm. to have as little Earth as possible involved uh, get rid of Jane Foster like you just said get rid of what's her name Kate, Kat, Kat Denning, Kat, Kat Denning. Um, get rid of basically the whole Earth element focus on like all the bits with Thor and Loki and stuff was pretty sweet um, it was when they are mostly on Earth and inserting Jane Foster into it just ugh, drab I mean I can't remember what, what um, Thor's mother was called but Renny Russo Aye. she's brilliant in it as well mm-hmm. uh, there's, there's good bits in it Dark World was our second lowest rated film behind that man yeah. was that behind that man yeah and that which was the worst. I pretty much just went ahead and tanked for everyone no matter what <laughs> you guys did but I fucking hate that film well, the thing is you yeah. oh sucks a dick yeah but not not in the good way <laughs> and yet you see with all of that stuff that you were saying there about setting Thor off Earth you know off Midgard and everything you see in Ragnarok how successful that can be the yeah? confidence they, they had yeah. in this film is quite ballsy because they've even in the marketing originally looking at the uh, I forgot his name Jeff Goldblum's character, the Grandmaster. Grandmaster's mm-hmm. attire and the world they're on. It's not Guardians, it's not Asgard, it's not Earth. It's weird, right? Mm-hmm. It's got that 80s kind of, you know, it's, it's awesome. There was a, yeah, there was a nice but it worried me. to the film. It worried me when I first saw this. And I and they just took a lot of chances in this film where it could have went really wrong. Mm-hmm. But actually, it's perfect. And it's, it's like they pulled themselves back from this and... Uh, Thor the Dark World and they could have had this then because Chris Hemsworth has always been good and he's mm. always been funny mm. he's, well I think that's the thing because he's basically he's, he's kind of like got the whole package you know hey, hey you know, he's, mm. he's, he's, he's good looking he's handsome all this type of stuff but I think you need the self depreciating humour mm-hmm. because otherwise he's too perfect and that yeah. makes him unlikable yeah it's the whole Superman thing yeah. Yes, that's exactly that's what exactly. it is. He would be Superman without this humour. But they've got to keep on making him look stupid at different points because he is so powerful and yeah, handsome and cool. Nerf and nerf him a bit, yeah. yeah. Through the humour and the self-deprecation, yeah. Pretty much, totally, yeah. Totally. Which I think they did even better in this film. And yeah. you, you, For some people, it would be too much the way that they, they made a fool of him. But it works mm-hmm. with him for some reason. Yeah. I think because he always bounces back and he's always just got a cheeky Literally. glint in his eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's always got a cheeky glint in his eye. But when he's hit with the ball and he comes up and he's just like, whoa, yeah, yeah. let's go, what's yeah. happening? Oh, <laughs> that, that bit where he threw the ball at the glass, that was fucking hilarious. Just to... <laughs> he bounces back and smacks him in the face. Yeah. What, um, what, what did they. They obviously changed the scene with Hela when she crushes Mjolnir. Because yeah, it was, it, it looked like it was in a street or something like that before. Yeah, and I, well, there was a few of them that had been changed because yeah. we said this to each other walking across. In one of the trailers, where he lands on the Bifrost, 
mm-hmm. and his eyes and everything are glowing. You obviously don't see what's happened to the eye yeah, yeah, in the trailer, sure. yeah, because they were hiding all of that. For mm-hmm. sure. Well, I don't blame them. It's something to. I'm actually going to look at the Infinity War trailer again. See I was see just thinking Thor. the exact same thought. I've never I watched it. Don't believe you don't want to watch it, do you? No, I want to. Do you? Me, I want to see the good, the good cut of it. I want to see oh, like right, good I don't quality. Have a good cut. Well, in that trailer, I think he also has long hair. Does he? I think so, from memory. He so d- he might well have long hair and two eyes. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's like they've oh, completely disregarded what's going on there. Oh, but Unless, maybe they covered it. So as a surprise, possibly, possibly they could have done in the same way that they covered it in that trailer. I felt as well. It was one of these films, having seen all the trailers, and because they've released different footage in different trailers in international territories as well, like China and things, sure. there are so many supercut trailers now, which are about four or five minutes long, mm. and I've watched them and thought, they've revealed too much of this. This is going to be a yeah. letdown, and most of the good jokes are spoiled, etc. Yeah, that, bit, like the... I didn't feel that at all when I went in there. I, I really thought that there was a lot more to that film than actually... Yeah, there's the probably... The line, yeah? three or four times as many jokes oh, and high yeah. spots in the film than you... Sometimes you get a trailer and you're like, you basically, you've seen the film, haven't you? And I did worry about that as well because there were some really good comedic moments in the trailer. Obviously, I mean, you've seen the film, but you remember the trailers with, with um, you know, he's a friend from work and all yeah, this type yeah. of stuff. Yeah, you know? that, that's, that's spoiler. It's a, shame that, it's a shame that they had that bit in it, in the, the trailer, because that would have been really good in the cinema, but the there's is, so many other bits. Oh, the bit. In that fight scene where Thor is getting thrown around and Loki just stands up and goes, Yes! That's how it feels! <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Well, I'm a big sports fan. <laughs> big sports fan. Uh, the way he was it's looking so, so like nervous and I stuff as I well. I need to get off this planet. <laughs> so terrified, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. It was and, hilarious. He, and it's just like a second. He's not saying anything. It's just a look on... Uh, Tom Hiddleston's face. Mm-hmm. And then he gets up and he's just like, I gotta get off this planet. <laughs> <laughs> so freaking good. Excellent. Right, so f- best bits of the film. Let's do, let's do our best bits then. Uh, Although we can't have been doing that. But... My absolute favourite moment, I think, of the film, or the bit I'm remembering at the moment, if I watch it again, I might have a different one. It's just a bit where he's talking to Loki in the. He's in that round bit with all the slaves that, and he's talking to Loki, who's just a hologram. Oh my god, yeah. And then Ho- yeah. Loki disappears, and what's his name, Korg? Korg. Korg comes yeah. out and just like, yeah, piss off, you ghost. <laughs> just kicks the wall, kicks like, the wall. a minute after Loki's gone. <laughs> it's <laughs> fucking hilarious. That, that was excellent. As I said to you, there was one bit, and I still can't recall, which was near the end of the film, and it just had me floored. I think it was by the time they had almost made it back to Asgard, but it just got me. But I cannot for the life of me remember it. While I remember, there was a moment where Hulk gets dragged underwater and yep. you see the tooth sinking into his body. Yeah. Yep. I think that's going to have significance later on because when he got thrown away by Saz, Satar or whatever it's Sour- yeah. Sauter? Sauter? S- something like that. When he got thrown away and he landed, he was still bleeding. Or was he? Yeah, the blood was still coming out of him, just dripping onto the ground kind of thing. Oh. And then he walked off. So I don't know, because they, they showed it, and I thought, there's they wouldn't show it. Yeah, there's got yeah. to be. They wouldn't show it if there wasn't. But then there was no significance of it after that, unless it was just... But I didn't see any injury, injury on him when he... I, I couldn't see it either. It was kind of concealed when you were seeing him grabbing onto the waterfall because of the water and stuff like that, and then you just didn't see it again because of the angles and stuff. Yeah. But, so, but then you would have, because... He was standing looking out of the ship with the rest of them while Asgard was being destroyed. Yeah, and true, the blue guy's yeah, like, it's okay because if you've got the foundations... <laughs> oh yeah, your, your plan's fucked. Yeah, sorry yeah. about that. Um, you see see his abs there, his mm. side and his stomach there, and then you see it later on when he's standing... Like I really thought he was going to push Loki when Loki, Loki walked up to Thor <laughs> um, when he was sitting in the I, chair. I was waiting for that. I was waiting for just, like, him just to like nudge him or do something and Loki to fucking shit it yeah. which would have been even, quality even the fact like we've just said <clears throat> earlier on that the whole chain spinning thing set the tone oh. and that tone continued right through yep. literally to the end when that what's his name Korg or whatever was just standing there like oh yeah he's dead I've stepped on him I've just been so sad I've been carrying his body around <laughs> for 24 hours oh he's alive <laughs> he's alive it's okay yeah. it's great and then it's like cut to credits and you're like oh what it's just constant it was- it was actually almost weird during the, the during the the straight up fighting scene near the end the, in the third act, 
when they, cause they didn't have that many jokes then mm-hmm. it was kind of like uh, what happened to the jokes see the bit where he's all lightened up and he's just mm-hmm. marching through them all it's so good cool I thought the oh, scene yeah. where Hela was attacking all the Asgardians near the start well not the start sorry, in the middle mm-hmm. um, I thought sweet as fuck but the CGI just looked off it did it had a there's a few of the vibe of Matrix, Matrix. Matrix. Yes. yeah it, the fact that all three of us have just said that it was definitely like that I instantly thought of that scene from the Matrix which was fine in 1999 and it actually still holds up pretty decent now because yeah. I just watched them this year really? but yeah it's it's really good but it could have just done with that little bit extra that bit wasn't perfect CGI and then the other bit that I didn't think was perfect was so when she kills the the Asian guy mm-hmm. yeah. with the spike, yeah. that didn't look very good. Yeah. And then the other, the only other bit I thought wasn't great was when when oh fuck, what's his name? Heimdall. Heimdall. Heimdall, 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 Heimdall is um is getting everyone into the shelter, and you can tell that they're on a there's a, they're, they're in a, either a green screen or a blue screen. Yeah, right. there was. It didn't. That huge chamber. The chamber didn't. The door at the other end. It had no depth. Yeah. Really. Yeah. There was something about it which meant it didn't have depth. The 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 angles were just slightly off or whatever. But I think with the first scene with the uh, Hela tearing through all the Asgardian troops and everything, kind of got away with the slightly CGI look just because of the whole tone and. Mm. You know, colours and everything. The film. Uh-huh. I think it. If it had been something like a uh, Dark Knight or Dark Knight Rises, you can't pull that kind of yeah, stuff off true, because it's so the much more are gritty and human. realistic. Mm-hmm. And because this is a kind of larger mm-hmm. than life film, you can get away with that a bit more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was funny because uh, Paul says to me, "What like it's hard to." So I can't remember exactly how you worded it, but it was like hard to relate that film. To the first Iron Man film, the, the uh, totally the, different universe. The opener of the MCU, and that, and I had the exact same thought when when the Valkyrie was jumping from ship to ship, and she grabbed the gun, turned it around, was shooting all the other ships, and I'm like, "Fuck, this is just a world away from Iron Man One. This is like, you couldn't imagine this. No, from watching yeah. Iron Man One all those years ago, being like, "Yeah, we're gonna get an Avengers movie. This is what movie nineteen. Is it 19? That, yeah, 18 19. or 19 movies well, in the series. I remember when they teased the fact they'd make an Avengers film I and I thought, oh, can you imagine if they actually made one, you know? And then we just get one, like, two or three yeah. times a year, like, yeah. something to do with the MCU. To, to me, it's well, hard 16, to... When, you're, when you come out of a film, it's, it's hard, until you've actually sat back and reflected, to actually place it. Yeah. You know? But... To me, I think it is right up there with some of the best MCU ones. Yes. Wait, 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 homecoming for I think the first Avengers film still tops it for me, only because that was the only one I've left the cinema and instantly thought, I want to go back into that like, right now and just watch the whole thing again. Oh, really? I think yeah. that for a lot I, of films, actually. I, like, I mean, I've gone back to see a few of them multiple times. I'll go and see that again mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. But I saw uh, Avengers 1 three times in three days. Right. Uh, I was just like, oh, what? I just, I couldn't believe they'd pulled it off. Because up until then, a superhero ensemble flick like that had never been done. And now it just seems... It's just what you do. It's, yeah. It's what like, everyone was trying it's to It's like do. Doctor Strange was in this and you're just like, oh, there's Doctor oh, Strange. Oh, fuck, yeah. I forgot about Doctor Strange being in this, of course, yeah. That was Funny. Oh, just yeah. the just the, the scene changes and he just keeps spilling the beer but the glass and, stays top. Breaking up. the shelves <laughs> and all this stuff. And he's like, Can you stop doing this please? They have wizards on earth. <laughs> he's destroying it, so you can just leave it now. And Loki <laughs> gets kind of offended by Doctor Strange's powers. He's uh, like, Right, I'm gonna fucking hump this guy and then no. Fucked <laughs> off again. <laughs> I do I do dislike Doctor Strange's gloves though. He doesn't put them on until the end of Doctor Strange and he, he wears them all through this. Those mm-hmm. big yellow gloves. Yeah, I preferred looked, it without the gloves. They looked... Uh, like oven mitts. They, they look like fucking like oven mitts. They looked like they, yeah. they did look huge. Like, like they were meant to be dead thick. And I thought even if they were skin tight it would look better. But they just looked massive. Yeah. It, yeah. I know he has big kind of yellow gloves in his original costume. What are you looking for? A drop of watch. Alright. But I... The most of... Well, almost all of Doctor Strange, apart from the end when he puts the gloves on, he, uh, he's just got like Stands, a kind of a yeah. 
at his hands and he's got a, 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 a shirt mm. you know like yeah. it's kind of it's puffy but it comes in tight to the wrist and I think that looks nicer and cleaner I think the gloves look goofy and um, so Kevin Feige um, I'd really like it if you get rid of those gloves please and PSG also you could play Thor and Loki and the same person yeah I could be you could bring me into it as like some secretly <gasps> overpowered character and then it turns out that I've been them joined together you should totally cosplay as that like what, Thor, Thor and Loki with a green cape and the, the hood the helmet with the horns but the hammer be, be totally both be both at the same time yes that would be pretty cool that would be pretty sweet actually yeah. That would be pretty sweet. Yeah. Also expensive. Ah, nah. Nah? Get on wish.com. You'd probably get the lot for about 100 quid. Nah. Ah. Well, MCM, if we ever actually manage to get together all of us and talk about MCM Comic Con, <laughs> maybe over Christmas, yeah, maybe we'll... Um, when we don't remember a thing about it, except we met Power Rangers. And I met Flash Gordon. He met you. Well, that's true, he did. Yeah. He did. So, yeah... Kevin, if you're looking for a new supervillain, I could be Thorky. <laughs> Thorky. <laughs> it's better than Lore. I Lore. Guess. <laughs> well, that's, I think Star Trek's got that. Oh, love it. Is, yeah. 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 Um, I, and on a side note, apart from giving me a job, um, I'd really like it if you could fix um, Heim, 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 Heimdall. Heimdall's uh, wig. Because that weave. <sighs> no, no. But he was the only person that didn't pull off the comedy, actually. He threw out this one joke at the start. He's been serious all through all of the films, I think. I've seen you coming. That was... Yeah, the, the, yeah, but he should have been like that. Like, he should have been but stoic for the comedy. And how that is the whole time. And even when he delivered it, it was like, I've seen you coming. Uh, yeah, and it was only no, but, but earlier on in the Thor... film, he bust out some uh, some comedy. He said to the... He, he made some joke to the people he was saving. Oh, the yeah, Bavians. he said, sorry about that. This sword's damn, damn heavy. Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and, and it's, it's like... just like, like what he said. Very good. Yeah, I, I thought... Like, yeah, I, okay. Is that a Loki hit costume? Oh, wow. And cut the sleeves off it. Mm-hmm. You've and got then, the blue light filter off that, don't you? Yeah. I uh, switch it off. It comes on at nine o'clock at night. Yeah. Oh, that's a Thor one as well. Thor one. So, well, maybe, so buy both and like piece them together. That's <laughs> good. You're not showing me prices. Oh, well, that's ten pound for the the helmet and hammer. So they're oh, probably really? they're probably shit. That looks like shitty plastic. Yeah, but I can hit through the toys on us and get yeah. that, I'm sure. <laughs> My biceps will carry it off though. <laughs> That'll lend the credibility. Like when Thor fights, he's just that was got great. a plastic one as well. That was that's fucking when... sweet. <laughs> Walk around with that in your hand. Like that you was, beheaded him. It was brilliant at the start of the film as well when he uses Mjolnir to just pin down the... Oh, oh my god! god. Yeah, you just stay there a second. That's <laughs> like the elevator thing, right? So yeah. almost. Or is it, no, it's not like the elevator thing. It's more like, you know that meme where he's got the... There's the one the, where the hammer on the toilet. The toilet. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what that was like. That's so fucking clever. I'm glad they used that. What are you, what are you doing? Is that oh, a guy? 40 quid for a Spider-Man another, No, really? <laughs> another brilliant moment I've just remembered was the whole, oh, well, we do get help. Well, we do get help. Yeah, yeah. And then they open the door, get help, get help. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine he throws oh, on. <laughs> I, I was like, well, we do what? What? What, I was what are we doing? I couldn't quite catch it. And he's yeah. like, I hate get help. And he's like, no, no, we'll do it. We'll do it. It's good. I <laughs> thought I was like, I was well, it's good for words. me. I don't look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing. No, it's not. I, I just thought I was hearing the words wrong because I'm like, get help. That doesn't make sense. Well, we like, do what, get help. What, yeah. Uh, yeah. What was I'm this? Not, uh, yeah. We're not doing get help. And he makes fun of Loki's outfit for dressing like a, a like a girl or a princess or something at the start. He's just wearing a black I suit. I remembered the joke. Ah, oh, it was when they're all standing in the room. And Loki's chained up, but Valkyrie, Thor, and Bruce Banner are talking like, yeah, you know, can we really trust this guy, blah, blah, blah. And he just goes, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, he always tries to t- trick me. Oh, this one time, when I was young, <laughs> he transformed into a snake. And, then, and he knows I like snakes, so I went over and picked him up. To and admire it. turned into a boy and went, yeah, then he stabbed me. <laughs> and then was that line, and then he stabbed me, and it cuts back to Loki. And he just gives this smirk like, yeah, I did stab him. But <laughs> and that, that smirk, me. though, looks like oh. that's actually Tom oh. Hiddleston laughing. Yeah. yeah. That looked like... It absolutely just got me that. That was the joke of the film for me. It just... You know, the... that, could, that could well be the joke of the film, actually. Just because you're yeah. like, 
okay, and the, and the snake bit him, and they turn back into a part just stabbed me anyway, and you're like, oh my god. You know the, you know the friend, from, get more the friend from work line? Yeah. That was actually suggested to Chris Hemsworth by a Make-A-Wish child who had paid a visit to the set on the day that scene had been, was filmed. No. Yeah, and really? this kid had said, oh, you should totally say it. he's a friend from work, and that's genius. Yeah, that's yeah. so good. Oh, man. Uh, oh, and and the first time, I mean, it was funny as it kept going as well. But definitely the first time when he's going, sun's getting real low there. Oh my god! <laughs> I, was, I was ending no, myself in that. So How good. quality though was it when Thor jumped off the big hammer and smacked Hulk with it and sent him flying around the yeah, the wall yeah, of the arena? Yeah. That was cool. Was tasty. And the fact that Thor could like hold his own against Hulk. I always said, I'm sure I always said. I maybe always said I don't know if yeah. I said that before but Thor actually just held his own and probably could have beat Hulk because we didn't his, beat him because of his new powers he didn't oh, he yeah. didn't beat him because he got uh, immobilised remember yeah but he didn't die yeah 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 and he, so he blocked his punch at the end there yeah. yeah like it's amazing when you actually see just how powerful he was in that you know with the full thunder powers and everything like that that they can make some characters not so much the likes of Hawkeye or Scar or uh, Black Widow. I think we all know if like he went up against them, they'd get wrecked. But there's other ones that you really believe could hold their own against them, like Captain America. When actually, on paper, you look at the powers and you're like, yeah, he shouldn't be anywhere near that level. And yet somehow, in-universe, they manage to pull off that they're all beasts. Mm. Like, I, I don't know how they quite manage it. Mm. I mean, they're, they're poles apart in, in strength terms. Yeah, you mean Cap and Hulk? Or yeah, like Cap, in, and Thor? Like Cap and Thor. Like in the first Avengers film, Iron Man and is it Iron Man and is it Iron Man and Thor who are having the fight in the forest? Yeah, and then Cap turns up and kind of stops uh, some of the shield, and then Thor, you know, comes across, smacks the shield, and the whole way it's set up is, oh, these are three equally powered dudes here, and then suddenly, but then you look at Thor in future films, and I think Thor was holding back for the humans. I think Thor has probably got this automatic response of the humans are weak. If I hit them really hard, I will kill them. I protect humans, therefore it just automatically pulls its punches. I think any time that you have to say anything like that, you're trying to cover up other flaws in the writing to me. If you're like, oh yeah, but he's actually not really trying his hardest. But oh, the, 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 that scene to me was to establish all three of them as being they're all good, big, strong, appropriate heroes. It's not like there's one leader of the bunch. You know, they're, yeah. they're, all, they're all leaders except Hawkeye and Black Widow. But the other four were really all top billing, really. Then they'd all had their own film. Exactly, and so they were establishing them all as being, yeah, these are all equal Avengers in their own right kind of thing, with the two supporting ones. I think Thor probably found... If you imagine how it would be for for him meeting someone like Iron Man, that would be quite interesting for mm. him. He yeah. probably, I'm not saying he'd be holding, pulling his punches, but he probably was maybe to a certain extent because he didn't want to kill him. Mm. So he's probably trying to figure out the appropriate strength level to win the argument and the fight, but not actually, because really, one punch from one punch from the Hulk on Tony Stark in the regular Iron Man armor would probably cave his head in and if Thor can match strength with the Hulk even before he levels up he would probably be able to do that as well but in terms of meeting Iron Man for the first time what a strange concept for Thor you Mm. know with all these different I mean I suppose he'd maybe think of it as he's some sort of metal like a sorcerer in, a, in, in armor they yeah. have wizards on and, earth and now yeah, do they every, yeah. single, every <laughs> single time though that they pit avengers against each other every single time it's shot in such a way as if to make you think these guys are all equal i think like but, when but, hulk but buster really. went up against hulk and then when civil war happened there's never be and even like cap versus iron man at but, the but end cap, of civil war but cap and had no Bucky cap as well could have Cap did have Bucky as well and so you can always say yeah Cap could have decapitated him with the shield at the end before he just plunged it into the armour but then you could say ah well he had Bucky helping him out earlier on so it's like there's never really a definitive and yet you do feel 
that Thor and Hulk are just on this completely different tier, mm-hmm. really. Yeah, which is why right. they were kept out of Civil War, I think. I think they probably just looked at it and went, there's uh, no way we can have these guys in this film. Yeah, because so. I don't think if someone like Thor were to go up against Black Widow, even well, Black wouldn't... Panther, any of them, it's like, yeah, You'd you're just going to get wrecked. Uh, well, this this is thing. I genuinely wrecked. think if Thor was in Civil War, he would say, I'm having nothing to do with this. And it would almost be in line with his character, given that that's almost what he did in Age of Ultron. I'm not getting in your petty squabbles. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes. More beer. (laughs) Apparently, see with the script, apparently around 80% of the script was improvised. Really? Yeah. For Ragnarok? Yeah. See, the scene with them when, when Hulk and Thor are sitting talking about Hulk smouldering fire you water yeah. and all this and, uh, type of stuff and again it looks like he's genuinely he just laughing. proper creased it and uh, they held it longer in the trailer but uh, they cut it quickly there so whoever was saying that line mm-hmm. to, to to Chris Hemsworth he fucking pissed it for he sure did, like yeah, for sure another thing which was just a small thing but I thought it was brilliant was when he's on that old trippy as fuck chair oh, yeah. and they actually start playing the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory <laughs> stuff what was that I didn't, world, I, I've uh, never uh, seen it this song was a um, world of pure imagination well, yeah. it's, it's, I've never seen Charlie oh, and the Chocolate Factory oh, the original it's... one has a scene where they're going down this little river mm. and it's I mean it's a creepy fucking scene oh, that's it's one of Marlon fun. Manson right no that was a movie it's, so, it's Gene Wilder, Gene Wilder yeah. I know uh, but it's, uh, yeah. It's you know really about Gene Wilder? Tell me more. I could. Yeah. Sorry, I feel there's a backstory. Well, yeah. that's, that's uh, the, meme. the meme, you know, with Gene oh, Wilder. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you were saying sorry, is it song? No, I was just saying that, like, it's it's just the theme song for that, but it's so reminiscent of, you, you've you seen the original one, mate. Yeah, that boat scene it. where they're going, that, what, you hate the film or you I hate, hate that boat that scene? I hate that film. Yeah? Oh, it's creepy as fuck. It is creepy. Start, start to finish. Yeah, it is Apparently, creepy. he was going super method on that, and there's there's a scene in it where one of the he shouts at one of the kids for doing something like fiddling about with the candy, and the kid starts crying, and that was genuine. Like he never told the kid he was going to go proper mental, uh, and the kid fucking shat it. And also, when they were doing the boat scene, yeah, is everyone get really kind of scared of him? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that's because they were scared of him. Oh yeah, the, his <laughs> intro to the film, like the first time you see him. It's such a. It's actually such a great intro, just to how zany a character he is. You, until you see it, uh-huh. like, you, you can't understand it. But is that, that was all improv. Stick? Yeah, uh-huh. and that was all improv. And I think, yeah, how brilliantly come up with that that whole thing. Some of the best stuff though is improv because it's sometimes easier to react in a situation. I was saying this to you last week. It's easier to react in a situation than to write a situation and imagine yeah. it and like. Yeah. And this is because yeah. we were discussing this about Ant Man, and I know you said you hate that film. Yes. But I think like Paul Rudd is fantastic mm-hmm. in various different films, and that he often improvs often a huge make, amount yeah. of stuff, and he just comes up with gold. I mm-hmm. think. And I think I like Paul Rudd. I don't like him in Iron in Ant Man. I don't even like Scott the way Lang. Or no, you don't, or no, you. No, I don't like. I don't like the suit. I don't like. The suit, I don't like the, the, the film, I don't like the comedy, I don't even like him that much in a, uh, 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 Civil War. No? No, I just I just don't like him for that. And if you want to know more about you that... You don't want that hero involved in the franchise? or If, like, if they said, like, oh, listen, Paul Rudd and <coughs> Marvel have you know, kind of fallen out, out a little yeah. bit. You know, so he's not going to be reprising his role, and we're going to shift it to someone else, or just casually forget about him, or to give it back to Hank, or something like that. You know, I'd be like, "Sweet, cool, good." Don't have to watch another Ant Man film. So, for more details on his hatred of Ant Man, check out episode one three three of the Buff Geek Podcast. Yes, nice. <laughs> um, Cheers, Stu. There's something you're saying. Yeah, yeah, nice one, Stu. There's something you're saying, and I, I want to probe you further on it. Probe you further on it. Yes, that's right. Mm, yes, but the, what was the name? It was like not Satan, but it was like ah, Saturn, I can't remember. I can't remember was. the name of that. In some ways, he's probably the most powerful being we've seen in the MCU yet. Well, no, did he beat no, Hela? Because Thor, yeah, he beat Hela at the he end. But Hela. did he? He plunged his sword through it and she ah, blew up. Beaten. You know. But actually, I've just no, thought she like, can't be actually, because I think Ego is probably the most powerful that we've seen yet. But Thor yes. beat him at the start, not Ego. Thor beat this 
Demon. I think it's almost like rock, paper, scissors. Thor beats Sazar. Yeah, but he wasn't fully powered. Sazar beats Hela, Hela he, beats Thor. He wasn't fully powered at that point. Though. Yeah. He'd been fully Possibly. powered by this eternal flame thing. But that, that's, that fight at the star, right? Yeah. Have you seen Wonder Woman? Surtur. No. Oh, fuck. Have you seen Wonder Woman? Did you ever manage to watch it? No, I never got to it. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> ah, that was at Volstag and Fandral. That's they just died so quickly, I and I was just kind of gone because that's Ray Stevenson and they Zachary hardly gave Levi. them anything. Actually, they just they were there to die. That was it. Yeah. Um, were they the ones who were waiting at the Bifrost Bridge when oh, Hela arrived right. in Asgard? Yeah, uh, yeah. Just I'm surprised they died seconds. just quite unceremoniously. They were just mm. gone. Uh, and and they're not small time actors either. I mean they're yeah. they're um, mid carders. Those two, Ray Stevenson. And Ray Stevenson is fucking great. Have you seen him in Dexter? Uh, uh, yes. Oh. Yeah, he's so good in Dexter. Um, he'd probably be a good Punisher, but I hated that fucking film. Punisher Warzone was it? Was it Warzone the second one? The non. No, there was. I think it was the third one. Right? It was just fun. It's like proper comic booky and mental, and the villains like. The villain looks like the Red Skull from the old Captain America film. Mm. His face is all wrecked. It's fucking sweet. Was it Jigsaw? Oh, there was, there was another thing. That's what I meant to say to you. When they were doing the play. Oh, yeah. They yeah. were doing the play. Of, uh, it was definitely Matt Damon. Because I was looking and thinking, That's, that yeah. looks like Matt Damon. You know what the funny thing is? I'm just looking here. They're not crediting him. So that it's a surprise. Because people will look up the credits. Yeah, for he's, sure. He's not listed in the cast that I it can see. It did look here. like it was him, though. It was Matt Damon. There yeah. was no doubt about it. But the guy who played Thor, I was saying to you, was the third Hemsworth brother, Luke uh-huh. Hemsworth, which I thought was quite funny. And Sam Neill played Odin. First film since Jurassic Park that Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum have both been in together. <gasps> That's pretty sweet. There you go. And that would have been more like 93 I was going to guess 95 well Guardians 2 brought together Stallone and Kurt Russell which they've not been in a film together since Tango and Cash which might have been 80 89 I don't know I'd have to look it up look it up but okay I'm going to talk to the to the people that have seen Wonder Woman just real quick Hopefully you don't mind me talking about the, the, yep. Was it 89? Mm-hmm. Man, I'm fucking good. Um, yeah. Do, I'm, do you mind Wonder Woman? Got no strong views one way or the other. Okay, so the end of Wonder Woman, the fight scene, okay, that's now the shit version of the fight scene we just saw. I really wonder if, if Marvel went, you know what? Let's do fucking gods and fire and the whole fucking thing. Let's put it at the start of the film and just destroy Wonder Woman's finishing scene in terms of uh, stakes, in terms of like humor, in terms of the CGI looked crisp. Oh at the start yeah, of the film, you know. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, what better are we talking about again? The, just the, the very start of the film. Oh, when and he, Thor's fighting all the but, things, and that. Yeah, and he's fighting the cool. he's fighting s- 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 the like Souter, Suture, Stitcher. There's a proper Balrog. Vibe about yeah. Him, yeah. Like you can, can I just well, call him Balrog? For the now? boxer from yeah, Street yeah. Fighter. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. But uh, totally him. Yeah. Um, I like that they were <clears throat> they were inclusive enough to make it a fire breathing humanoid type character because With those boxes. those need love too. Yeah. As well as you know, I it was pretty cool. Like how he was just fighting them all, and then it's like. Uh, he takes off hammer cam uh, oh yeah 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 hammer cam was, was pretty cool, cool right Stop. yeah yeah hammer cam do 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 but then he's do, flying do. off and the thing's chasing him and then he flies through the portal and the head comes through <laughs> oh <laughs> <was> sick man grosses <laughs> the place up and he's just like oh look who they was that fella Carl Urban was that Carl that Urban that was Urban. Urban. Judge Dredd himself was it right? well I was going to say that he is he, for what little he was good for he what was, little he, he had to do he was really funny at the start and then you got to see a lot of expression on his face well, in some ways he had the biggest arc of the movie that's what I was yeah. thinking just at the end there where he makes that turn yeah, although yeah. I don't know if you guys noticed I wanted to say but I don't like talking during the films um, he actually has his, um, <clears throat> his M16s on his back when he's talking to Hela 
when she's in the throne room. Mm. For a split second, they're there and then they're gone again. All uh, oh, right. So I, I don't know if he was Those, um, originally carrying them the whole time. Had extended magazines in them, like. And they were. I don't know if if they were supercharged with. As guardian bullets, but yeah. they seem to be doing an awful fine job on the the putty patrol. Yep, they sure did. Whichever putty patrol this is, I don't know what their well Hela's army, but I don't know what their name was. Army of the Dead, I don't know. Hela's army, <clears throat> the original as guardians. Did the, you did you a little bit fall in love with Hela as soon as she like appeared? I wasn't love. Yeah, lust. Yeah, was, yeah. Absolute lust, right? Yeah. That yeah. Smoking. Oh, sure. absolutely oh, smoking just, hot. Absolute perfect figure. Not to objectify her in any way right now, but um I know that's not very but, diverse, Jesus, come on. But let's objectify her oh. because um wow. God Cause, damn. Because hot blooded men. Because hot blooded men. Let's be honest, it's kinda of what they were aiming for as well, you know. If they were oh, hypersexualized. Yeah, I mean if they... And to be fair, you've got every single Thor film he Chris Hemsworth has a topless scene in it. So it, it Oh and they got it in this one as well. Of course, of course. Well, yeah. Top, is topless but to be it's fair if I had a body like when, that I'd, I'd want it's a like top when suit. Cap first comes out of the chamber and everything and uh, one of the nurses in the background just cannot take her eyes off of her uh, body mm. and, it's, and uh, what's her face Agent Carter mm. um, yes. like kind of reaches out to touch his peck and is like oh god yeah. <laughs> it's like, geez, oh. I want to touch but I don't know what to do <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I think that was nice for the boys to get a little bit of someone to look at for a yeah. change instead of Chris just Hemsworth. getting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, aye. Myron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, nice gains, bro. <laughs> nice gains, bro. If you want gains He's... like this, Alpha Fitness. Oh, nice. He's already on it. I didn't want to say that <laughs> me and Chris train together, but uh, we do, you know. And um, well, he, he also he, he tried to convince me to get a haircut, and I was like, nah. Nah, it's not the right thing to do. And <laughs> Would you consider a haircut if, like, some Stan Lee guy comes up to you with one of those massive devices? That thing looks fucking lethal. Oh, I thought you actually meant if Stan Lee offered me a working job. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I would consider cutting my hair for that, yeah. <laughs> but, oh, I, do, I don't think he looks right with the haircut. Yeah. I don't like it at all. I think they just wanted to just change his appearance and just get rid of the classic Thor look and just bring something else in well he said he he wanted I read an interview with him the other day he said he wanted to give people a reason to come see it so they wanted to set it somewhere else and do this and do that and change his look just change oh, everything see by the end of the film his look's changed completely you know? I mean it looks and cool how, he, with... how he's able to actually look at things has changed completely too yeah. it looks cool with the eye patch now and the short hair but if they hadn't I'm I'm glad they gave they've given them the eye patch. Mm. I can almost I can almost accept the eye patch and let him, let the hair thing slide. That'll be a much easier day for him. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, he I'm, probably I'm, he's probably said to them, "Listen, I'll do it, but we're getting rid of the fucking hair." I'm sure he it must be hours. Said that. I mean, he's done. He's glad to have got Avengers rid of the hammer. Films and the Is first he? two. He's what sorry? He's glad to have got rid of the hammer as well. Well, he's not gonna. Well, they're not gonna replace it then. I suppose they don't have to do well, they kind of wrote it in that way when Odin was saying to him, the, the hammer Focus. was never the power. Are you the god of hammers? No. <laughs> are you the god of hammers? Yes. <laughs> you are the Just god everything's of- amazing. Yeah. Although, as much as um, Anthony Hopkins was funny in this, he is hysterical in Transformers. I've oh, not seen I it. I've not seen it either. I've, I still don't know if I want to see I it. I had the best time at that film. I liked it better than, a lot better than Dunkirk. I've not oh, seen Dunkirk either. Just a ball ache on life, you know? Yeah. I just feel that Transformers has been going downhill since the first movie. And so oh, I'm it's terrible, yeah. It up, yeah? But, yeah, it's like first movie, second movie, third movie, fourth movie. I have no idea what the oh, first one's overall No, it's, 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 it's bad. It's steeply down. The fourth one was horrendous. Three was better than two, I would say. Two, See, I like two better than two. Two was fucking awful. It's even... Two had the forest fight scene, which I remember, I don't know if you remember, I'd done a Transformers rant on the website, which included that YouTube video, Mm -hmm. because the forest fight scene was fucking awesome. And then Optimus dies, and... (laughs) How long do you have to be sounding the spoiler horn for? Surely you do it beforehand as well. Um, Optimus dies, and then they wander a desert for an hour. And then they get to the conclusion that you've seen happening, like, 
about three minutes after Optimus died. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, for fuck I didn't you. like. I, I probably like this Transformers film the best out of all of them. Of all of them, including Transformers one. 1. And I'll tell you why. Because Anthony Hopkins is fucking hilarious. Because <laughs> Anthony Hopkins was fucking off his face on this film. He was hilarious, right? Um, the girl is like a mixture of the two girls that of, of Megan Fox and then like the really classy Rosie lingerie Huntington model. Huntington Whiteley. Yeah, she's like a mixture of both of them, so you're getting all that flavour at the same time, and you're like, ugh, objectified, ugh. <laughs> um, <laughs> that should be like a new catchphrase for the show. Right? Yeah, you just been objectified. <laughs> um, Mark Mark Wahlberg is just hilarious, running about with a sword, fighting trap. Like it's just ludicrous, and they somehow managed to also drop in a few like, remember this film's this series has been going on for like ten years. Remember like Sam Wiki and stuff, and I'm like, oh, I do remember <laughs> how much I hated that film. Good times. <laughs> they managed to still make you feel sentimental about it, even though you fucking hate it, because they've got that. Who's the military guy? Josh DeHamel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, him. He, he's pretty good in it. There's some kind of good bits in it, but I just went in there with like I just like clear slate, just let things happen, and it was fucking hilarious. It was like Fast and the Furious Seven. Seven. Oh, yeah. that's see. I like those films, but see the bit at the end where Vin Diesel says, "The one thing about fighting the street, the street always wins," or whatever it is. He and says, he stomps a thorn and spoo. And I'm like, that is cringy. I have never seen a Fast and Furious film. Watch. You don't need to. You no, know, you can you can pick it up from Fast and Furious, which is the fourth one, I think. Watch four, five, six, seven. So there's what, there's what Fast and Furious. Some too would fast, say, too furious. No, fast and Furious. No, there's Tokyo Drift. There's the Fast and Furious. Right. Is the first one. Right, back and then the it's original. Too Fast, Too Furious. Then Tokyo it's Tokyo Drift. Drift. Does it matter that you're shaking the table? Or no. Much? Then it's. No, it's still just a movie. Yeah, it's fine. Really? Yeah. Then what's the, the fourth one? Fourth one is then called. I think it's the fourth one. It's Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious. And then, and then, then what is five, just five, six, Fast Five, Six, Seven? Yeah, right. Okay. Oh, uh, you could watch them. You could not. Yeah. The I don't know if you're missing out on anything terribly. No, There's so it, many other things that I would action. much rather catch up on. Than yeah, that. I think you'd probably rather watch the Marvel Wolf films again. It's well, more even then, like, even TV and you, like, you keep saying to me, "Oh, I'll watch Daredevil." I've never watched Daredevil. Daredevil. So like, you need yeah. to watch the lot. <gasps> I tried to watch some uh, Iron Fist the other day. Good on you. Put it on the background. Uh huh. Ten minutes. No, not even. <laughs> Still better than Attack of the Clowns. Anyone a Star Trek fan? Yes, yeah, that's what but I, I won't. I won't, Attack of the I won't watch this new shit. The D- Discovery. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. Right. Because it's going to be wanks, right? And if I'm going to watch any Star Trek, I'm going to go and watch Deep Space Nine again. Deep Space Nine is easily the best. Thank fuck someone's saying this. Deep yep. Space Nine is. <laughs> it's it's the only serialized one. Really? Yeah, all the rest of them are episodic, which at a point in time, yeah, that was great. T- t- TV's moved on. Yeah. Like, having an overarching arc is so much better. And the, the, the thing about the thing about Deep Space Nine is that you get every, everything that you'd like about the old Star Trek for the first season or two, mm. and then Cisco grows a goatee, and, and then, then shit just goes fucking wild. He's the best captain, is honestly. Oh my god, so isn't he just? He's yeah. fucking amazing. So basically, I won't watch the new Star Trek because I would rather watch that, and then, and then after watching Deep Space Nine, if I wanted some some more fix of something like that, I would go and watch Babylon Five. Yeah. So the new Star Trek can suck a big fat one. I get told as well that Battlestar Galactica is excellent. I've been told it's really good. I played the board game. The only other thing, and then we'll move on to Star Trek. Laughing at me. Just about is going to sleep. Is I have been watching Discovery. Okay. It's good so far. Right. I'm quite enjoying it. it Why do the Klingons serialized. look like Asians from the seventies? Are they the, are these the bastardized Klingons that were in the Star Trek, the the original Star Trek? You know in the original Star Trek how the Klingons were all yeah, like yeah. basically <sighs> Asians but they didn't have like that Klingon look. Yeah, if these are kind of more in keeping with the new JJ Abrams films. It's not following on from those films because I think that those films are Are you watching videos of your child? It's not my child. That's worse. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think JJ, although in some ways you can say, oh, he's breathed life into the franchise. It's the wrong life. 
for me. Right, okay. But <laughs> it's, uh, so I liked the first Star Trek with them. Um, well, the first Star Trek was fine, and Into Darkness should have been, but wasn't. It was and, terrible. Um, Star Trek Beyond was fucking appalling. What was but it? Anyway, I thought it was just dreadful. But anyway, with Discovery, it's good because it's serialised. It's about the whole war between the Federation and the Klingons ten years prior to Kirk, etc. But the one thing which, for some reason, is just pissing me off is they've cast what her name is, Sonique Martin Green, Green, who was out of The Walking Dead. Who's that? Black woman, but... So, token black woman as the lead with the name Michael, just to be really diverse. Like, oh yeah, look. She can have a boy's name as well, For and it's like sake. it's like yeah, you could call her Alex or something like that, which a little bit ambiguous. Neutral, Lindsay yeah. Cameron, but the, yeah, but it's like oh, oh yeah, yeah, we've Armstrong. got a black woman called Michael as our lead, and I'm like, can you try and be any more? It's like just hitting you over the head with the diversify, diversify. Do you know what I'm fed up of? But then what they've, someone someone has said recently is that. They think Thor's going to die and then they're going to replace Thor with a woman. Yeah, because of the comics then. And it's like... Well, that's what happens in the comics. Yeah, I, but that, just because it happens in the comics doesn't mean it's right. Like, why is it the case? Can't boys just have, like, their heroes? Yeah, Like, yeah. so, if that's the case, I don't... Do you ever think to yourself, do you know what? I wish they'd replace Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman with a man. Wonder or Man. Scar... Um, I do it all the time as well. Black Widow with a man. Yeah. That'll never happen. Why can't T'Challa be white? Why can't I be the fucking Black Panther? Yeah. Have you seen... Um... It should be that. That should be the way. That should absolutely be the way. And if they cast Thor as a woman just for the sake of it, for this new bullshit, I don't know what to call it, I'll probably not even go to the film. See, when you're oh, saying... Yeah. Um... The one thing I would say as well about Sonica Martin Green, though, is... She is good in it. She's fantastic. It's not. This is Why nothing against her. Michael, her. though. This is just. It, it's the Michael that's really pissing me off. It's the fact that I've got no problem at all with you having a female lead. I've got no problem at all with you having a black lead. I've got no problem at all with a black female lead. But Michael is so in your face that this is like a political statement. I'm like, well, oh, well that's that's the thing. That's, the, that's the thing. That's, that's why it doesn't work because it is a political statement. Yeah, and if you hadn't have done that, then fine. You've just got What's a black the female lead, which is no problem at all. Michael Burnham. Michael Burnham. So instantly, that's like, I'm Who's... thinking a strong fucking man character. And exactly. And a female. And that's why I just think, you've gone and wrecked this for yourselves. Because otherwise, you can just be like, oh, she's a black female lead. Why can't... Oh, oh, we hadn't even noticed. She was just a fantastic actress, and so we just put her in. Oh, like why Catherine are you even going about this? But by going, oh, and we call her Michael, it's just like... You know what Fuck we should off, do? We'll on. call her Michael. That's how it went. Because oh, of these God. reasons. So bad. See like, the bit so bad. where Hela destroys Mjolnir. I know. I want to be Hela. Yeah. I want to be in tight leather. And Can I be that, please? In the trailer, you see it in New York. I don't know if you in remember In New York? It. I thought it was you like, see it in, like the in the streets in an of alley. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's in New York. But Taika Waititi, the director, felt that was the setting wasn't right. And that's why when you get to the film... It's reshot in a field. Also, did you think that after the eye came out, that makeup looked fucking dodgy at times? Like when you got close ups of his face, you could see his eye was just closed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so bad. Yeah, that, I, well, I kind of thought that was um, almost deliberate as well. I thought he kept his eye. It was he kept it, he was keeping his eye closed. I thought he got a burn mark. I thought well, she he lost burned him. She said to him, you know, even without an eye or something like that, he lost his eye. Yeah, but I oh. thought at the point where I saw that it was closed, I thought he was keeping the eye, the lid closed, but he still lost the eyeball. Yeah, yeah. right. But no, he was a. Uh, he lost his eye. That was pretty cool. I was surprised they went with that. Yeah. Did you check the the trailer to see if he's lost his eye and in if the, he's, in the trailer he hasn't lost his eye? Definitely. Not. And what about the Infinity War trailer? Uh, I need to go and find it. Need to go find it. Right. Any other standout scenes? Oh, there's there's just so much good stuff. Like the the only the only bad things I think I've already mentioned is the the the, the Matrix part. Yeah. The, the room didn't look vast enough. Yeah. And Heimdall's Heim, Heimdall's comedy 
bit at the start and his general look looked cheap. Yeah, I know what you mean. He looked like a guy. He looked like an actor dressed up as an Asgardian, whereas the rest of them looked like Asgardians. Yes, if that he makes didn't look, any sense. Yes, he didn't yeah. look like an Asgardian. He looked like it looked like um, Idris Elba dressed up. <laughs> I, Idris Elba cosplaying. Yeah. As opposed to like, it, it, the hair looked really just really bad. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think it would have looked better if they just gave him his regular haircut because you would never know that he had long hair underneath that helmet. Yeah. I've just had a thought. In the Infinity War trailer, mate. that's dangerous. I I've know. told you about those. But in the Infinity War trailer, it starts with Thor. There's no missing out. You would notice that instantly. Well, I thought that, he, and he's got short hair as well, right? Thanos has got a hold of his fucking. Are beam. you wanting to see this? Uh, no, I don't right. actually want to see it. So there's what happens there, <clears throat> and then you see. If, so it starts. We're just watching the trailer at the moment. You guys are just like tagging along. Yeah, right? you Boom. definitely. So okay, Thor. I'm gonna. So he's got no hair. And he's got two eyes. Yep, for sure. So they've edited that or shot. Oh yeah, and then when you bring him inside there, yeah. But then I suppose yeah. the missing eye can just be CGI for little bits. Anything, anything that you guys didn't like, or have we didn't covered like, them all? I, I no, it's one of these films where and it's, and we're too buzzed from it, I think, to really pick it apart. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, I feel pretty, mm. pretty relaxed, even though I had another. Uh, another Pepsi Max. Um, feel Whoa, pretty relaxed. Pushing boat out there. Yes, well. Yeah. But no, there are some parts of a film where although you can enjoy the film over, like for example, I came out of The Force Awakens, mm -hmm. and even right after The Force Awakens, I thought that was excellent. Just a shame that it leaned on A New Hope as much as it did, but that really was excellent. But right well, that's JJ Abrams being safe. Yeah, because he likes know, to do the first film again or yeah. whatever, you know. But whereas coming out of that, there's nothing obvious springing to mind. Whereas, as I said, I've, I've come out of plenty of films before and thought, yeah, that was excellent, and take nothing away from the film. But it would have been even better if they'd done this. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can't think of too many things, if anything, there. No, the, the, that. The, that, the pacing the... was all right. The action scenes packed enough punch the humour was fantastic uh, how's the score for you David? the score of the film? yeah we're just jumping straight to that are we? no the score the music oh right okay yeah yeah um, <laughs> the, it was quite backgroundy I didn't notice it so much this time I don't think it was too many different things but it was more reliant on the actual songs rather than score <laughs> Yeah, so you had the immigrant song, you had the the magic sword song, I think as well, which was quite prominent in the trailers. Okay. You had another couple of, and it was very eighties vibe as well. Uh, very. The only ones I re registered at all, really, were that that one, yeah. that both the beginning and end fight scenes, yeah. and the Willy Wonka one in the chair. And other the, there was that, the other one. So is that is that Thor's song now? Because it happened both times when he was kicking ass, so is that actually well, like they, literally they, they, his theme tune now? I think I, I, I don't know. Because That's an expensive one. <laughs> they yeah, well, but they had um, it was a very kind of eighties opening in the sense of like you had the action, you had the humor, and everything like that. But the graphics and everything were very kind of retro looking, yeah, and yeah. the music was there as well. Wow. And I think it was almost like like a modern film with an eighties overlay in some respects, and it worked. Yeah. Um, but of this because the 80s is fucking amazing and people that are in charge of things now grew up in the 80s grew up in the 80s yeah and that's why you're getting such beauties it's like Stranger Things you're getting lots of throwbacks that just came 80s. out the other day did it? Uh, was, no, was that in the States? Week, no. Friday, Friday oh it came Friday. out in the States then because someone reviewed it I they thought. might have seen a preview oh right is uh, it Friday? Friday it's out you know what, which I wish... will be Saturday morning for us wish my girl was into this kind of stuff because then I could just say to her, listen, we've got a weekend saw and we're watching all Stranger Things. <laughs> but she doesn't like anything nerdy. No. Which isn't that. Ditch her. Hi. Should I? Still right, we've got an opening, ladies. We've got an opening. Yeah. <laughs> you or got you've an got opening? an opening. <laughs> Objectify <laughs> me. Yeah. I wonder what the percentage of girls to guys is that listens to this. I, mean, I know we've all got really sexy voices and we're really handsome, but ninety percent female for sure. Yeah, oh, <laughs> straight. <yeah>. In. <laughs> yeah, 
without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. talking about the non-listeners. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. I'm sure there's an, an analytical that could tell us the the, 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 the sexual nature. I don't of, think that's fact, information I, we have access to. No. Mm. Unless they interact with us, we have no idea. Better start speaking to us a little bit more, yeah, ladies. Let us know what you all think. Although, uh, by me classifying ladies and fellas, have I just cut we out? We are old school. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I kind of think if you get a sex Which change, everyone's closest to what you identify with. If, yeah, if you get a sex change, well, surely you do the other one now, right? I mean, I mean, no, I mean straight up, like, so I, I was speaking to a girl. Right, who used to be a guy, and she definitely wanted to be considered to be a woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you wouldn't change to a girl and then say, ah, "Just call me a dude." I, I wouldn't get a sex change and then be like, "No, I, I want you to call me either one of these weird gender pronouns now, or just still call me a dude, or call I think me a." You've fucking... got to go for morning or night. You know, it's like um, yeah. if, you, if you are nine o'clock a.m., you're definitely morning, and if you're 9pm you're definitely night but then there's the varying grades in between you just have to group closest to whatever's there so male or female yeah I, I did well but surely if not, you wanted was to change it not the US recently that actually came out on this and said there's 15 th- th- there, no there was a law that they'd passed which said I believe there's 25 you've got to use the toilet of your birth gender and it like went totally against this whole new thing, and folk were going mad. Were I they? I can't remember if it was the US, but it was somewhere where they were like, "No, no, so I've got to go with." It, it maybe wasn't the US; it was maybe <sighs> a state in the US. But someone very recently in the news came up with that ruling, and folk just lost their. I shit. think I think yeah. toilet of your birth gender is wrong. Yes. I think. Thor was a fan. Gender is just film. a social construct. Yes, it's not even real. Um, no, I, I gets think... gets his coat, drops mic, leaves room. <laughs> <laughs> Runs from the mob with the pitchforks and burning torches. Yeah. I think if you've got... If you look if you look like a woman, then you go to the ladies one. Like David. If you've got... Yeah, if you've got... Yeah, you got most of the apparatus of one sex, you go to that one or more, you know, whatever. But in terms of birth... No, I think that's a little bit too much the other way, saying because then if I had a hey. sex change, it Thank took you well. If I had a sex change and became this absolutely stunning female, I wouldn't want to go into the toilets where dudes go because one, well, then they'll probably they'll either think that I'm up for it or they'll then they'll guess. It'll that, depend how you dress, apparently. Ah, uh, of course, of course. <laughs> Glory <laughs> hole cubicle. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Well. It, so do you think that was a drink. direct response to her heightened sexuality in the film? Because Kate Blanchett is not usually like that. Maybe, yeah, probably. Yeah. She probably maybe stop felt, shaking. Maybe felt things. a bit vulnerable yeah. after doing it. I don't know. And felt she needed to say something like that because not necessarily. Vulnerable She'd been doing films for twenty years. Maybe not vulnerable sexually, but vulnerable from a backlash potential. Because well, yeah. she pay, played and quite so, a hypersexualized character, and then preempted it with. Just because I was dressed like this didn't mean I was asking for it. You can put a steak down in front of a dog. You tell the dog not to eat the steak. Dog won't eat the steak. You know? So, I've seen these videos online. Anyway, I want to get back to Thor Ragnarok. Cause, okay. Because you keep diversifying and diversity and stuff like that. And, well... We I don't know. know. There's been a lot of things that come up on the news recently that have kind of pissed me off a little bit in the last couple of days. And I'm, I think I'm just trying to... Have a ranty podcast if you want. Paul's up for a ranty podcast on all manner of diversity yeah, and stuff. The, the problem with our, our ranty podcast is that when he starts his political career in future, he's like, shit, delete, 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 delete. delete. <laughs> but it's I okay. said none of these things, cunt nigger. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the earlier. Well, funny how cunt you. Cunt nigger love. <laughs> exactly. That's all you need. Cunt nigger love. Yeah. Okay. No, <laughs> speaking of which, right? Talk. I'm talking Hulk Hogan here, right? Hulk what Ho- you gonna do, brother? What you gonna do, brother? He managed to convince a jury that the reason that his <laughs> sex tape was was uh, unfair was because they were attacking Hulk Hogan, who is not a real person and is a character, and that's basically how he makes his living, and not Terry Bollea. 
that's how he managed to sort of get around it or how he started to because mm-hmm. you know about the Gawker case and Hulk Hogan sued for the sex tape right well there's been lots of other celebrities who have had sex tapes and haven't had the situation haven't, have, well they've had no joy with it but Hulk Hogan did get joy with it because he managed, they, they, they build it as Hulk Hogan which is a character and then he Steve's also famously said about Hulk Hogan's penis is bigger than Terry Bollea's penis brother mm-hmm. And he says, of course, of course, I mean, it's not my, my penis isn't fucking 12 inches. Ha, ah, you know, that's Terry Balea. I'm Terry Balea, but Hulk Hogan's penis is 12 inches. And they're like, what? And that's what I'll do for the political career later on. I'll be like, well, the buff geek said that, not me. <laughs> As a character I'm playing, so to speak. And you're aware that that character is a black female, right? <laughs> I absolutely am. Which is why we can't have a ranty podcast that's not going to be two middle-aged white dudes. Yeah. <laughs> one who works in an office all day and one who's got a business. Oh my God, we're so white and middle-aged. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the other word? Red and white and nerdy. Privileged. Privileged. <laughs> Check your privilege. My pri- I'm, I'm so fucking privileged getting no support in any way from the government, monetary or otherwise, with a fucking roof that's caving in in my house. Yes. Oh, it's another room. The roof. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> hey, let's go back to Thor. Mm-hmm. Yes, please do. I so I've spent a little bit of salt bay in uh, this one. Yeah. Here, he's leaning on that table again. I know. You stopped running on the me table. Out there. You were all nice and polite. I don't know what the start of this Why would you sit on this? On the whole next couch. To you. I do. Do I take up that much room? No, it's just a kind of, like. I just end up fucking up. You just like to lie about on the floor and try and crawl under the desk like a fucking creep. Yes, that's yeah. exactly what it is. Okay, so is there anything we've not mentioned that we that we that we liked or didn't like? The, okay, here's something that they recently said, and they being um, Mark Ruffalo. Mark, Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, yeah, okay. Wow, it's so good that we've got this connection. It's just like <laughs> mind meld, mind yeah, meld, mind what meld. I said to you before we started, uh, before he turned up. So. Yeah. Um, oh, we have to tell them that. Don't we? We can't project our thoughts into their minds. No, it's not no, quite yet. Yeah. Okay. So Mark Ruffalo said that basically they're starting a story arc for the Hulk and Bruce Banner, which is spanning three films. It's this one, and I don't well, think well, it's must be Infinity War. Must be Infinity War, War two, and one and two. Four. Yeah. So that's the next three films. Is, is Avengers four definitely no Thanos, or has that not yet been confirmed? I don't I, know. I think he'll have to. And they can't have him just in one film. No, he's too. Well, he's, he's been, been built, built up since. for so long. But anyway, right, so Mark Ruffalo said that starting he's got a, an arc. Starting an arc. Right. So then the start of the arc happens in Thor Ragnarok. So the start would be presumably that he... turns he... off Scarlett Johansson and starts fancying Thor. Yes, I think that's the setup as well. That's what the whole... Um, it's getting real... It's getting <laughs> really getting inclusive. Real <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that is so good. But do, yeah. is it just... Does it relax you when she says that? No. No, or love, love gets bumping it. when she speaks in any way, shape, or form. It's true, right? Yeah. I mean, there's just something ob- objective <laughs> me. <laughs> We're never going to get a female to come and podcast with us. Well, they may podcast with us. Don't know if they'll come. They always do. <laughs> <laughs> so his arc is that he struggles to become Banner again and the Hulk is consuming him yes. but also becoming smarter mm. and more handsome I turned to you halfway through the film and when mm. he said the next time I turn to the Hulk I won't turn back I said to you mm, maybe he is going to die here because I also thought he was going to I, I oh fuck you Kev I <laughs> <laughs> I I, because he'd said all this I just thought yeah it really Hi, does make sense yeah and I was kind of waiting at that cutscene at the end for Thanos to actually just kick shit off. Was so Wouldn't that be amazing if, if Thanos I, I, just I like crushed expect, him? I have expected that? that to be an extended cutscene for, you know, two or three minutes of Thanos going, like, getting the Tesseract and the gauntlet because we'd seen both of those early in the film, so we know he needs them. And well, he's that gauntlet yeah, though. And well, Hela even tells us it's a fake, yeah. so she manages to fix that little problem that they may or may not have had. Yeah. But the Tesseract was still yeah, there. Was so true. unless Loki's taken it with him, hence Thanos which he has. then chasing oh, yeah. down the ship, which is why... Well, that's why the ship appears there. All of that, yeah? that must be why the ship appears there yeah. right then. Because Loki must have taken that. And he's probably going to say, give me the Tesseract, boy! Now, and has do Loki you think that's taken Thanos? it as some... It has I didn't think so. Be... And then... Danny? Yeah, Daniel. Daniel? said to me, oh, it's definitely Thanos' ship. And I was like, 
would he come in a ship? Wouldn't he just appear? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it just, it has to be him. He must be coming for Loki for the Tesseract to complete the gauntlet. Is the And Thor's going to say, ha ha ha, the Tesseract was destroyed back in Asgard. Isn't that right, Loki? Why are you running away? <laughs> and he would, <laughs> Loki would be hitting a, hit a bolt. Would Loki have taken it to make a peace offering with Thanos? Because he knows oh, Thanos' power. He knows about Thanos. Of, yeah, because he's... Why would he make a peace offering? With because some Thanos guy making a him immortal? Beast. So I was reading some theories the other day, some MCU theories, mm-hmm. and one of them was that Loki purposefully lost the battle um, in Avengers. He was literally there to provide a distraction so that the Chitari could invade Earth, and um, apparently the Chitari are created by the Kree or the, the Skrulls, and yeah. they can change form so they the real plan was to get them into into to uh, infiltrate right okay um and loki so also he, wanted to get himself locked up in asgardian jail so he was right underneath right, right where thor uh, odin would be mm-hmm. um and have them think that he was actually you know well defeated but plotting from underneath them do you think that's a thing it's possible, yeah, because you wouldn't notice if like the scrolls were coming in, or uh, is it scrolls? Yeah, I think and that's turning too, into humans and then just ah, I think that's them. too detailed for the majority of the populace who would watch these films, and hence they'll show it away if, from. But if, if, if they could, I think flash back I think it's a little bit it, pointless though. because you could just have them up. You could just seek them in anywhere. But any you time. could have a moment where it's just like this total. So like maybe just before Thor gets killed or something like that and Loki's just explaining when the Chitari were coming in so were they and you see them coming in changing into humans and running away and scuttling away and then I did this and I did that and you could see it as it's happening you know they could explain it in a, a couple yeah. minute monologue kind of thing or something yeah. like that with flashbacks possible I think it, it kind of is needless but that, apparently that's a quite a, a, a popular theory and another popular theory is that um Ultron knew about Thanos coming somehow. I can't remember how they worked it out, but when I read it, it made sense. And he was actually trying to prepare the Earth for him by making sure only the strong survive, a la an apocalypse style manner. And that's also why he raised up Sokovia because he makes some joke about when someone throws a world at you or something. And in the trailer, I, I keep hearing that Thanos throws a moon at. The Avengers, or, or something, he, he grabs it and starts he, he, to pull it towards, yeah. Yeah, so like allegedly, Ultron was trying to test that out, and he uh, might have picked it up from Scarlet Witch's mind vision powers or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. See, I was I thought of my own theory actually that maybe that is kind of true, and Ultron created vision so that he would he was meant to put his consciousness into vision, the perfect being, with the mind stone. Is it the mind stone? Yep, yeah. Um, which means he would be in charge of protecting it. So he was actually planning to protect the world and fight Thanos with that power. Yeah. I mean, I'd forgotten for a minute that he had the Mind Stone. He's going to have to die in this. Well, Vision's got yeah. to die, right? Yeah. Vision has to be the... He'll probably be the first one that'll die. Oh, he'll just crush yeah. his head and... And grab the stone. You'll have to. Because there's no point in having Thanos turn the up without... Because like, can... on paper, he's one of the ones... He's an OP. Is, mm-hmm. Yeah, he's OP in line with Thor and Hulk. When we were talking about like the highest level Avengers, he's up there with them. So if Thanos, without a fully powered gauntlet, turns up, crushes his head and takes the stone and becomes even more powerful, you really do think, what the fuck is even the likes of Spider-Man in that? <laughs> you know, what the fuck Spider-Man going to do against that? This I, is why th- Vision being in Civil War didn't work. I've just clicked just something. He's the only OP one there, you mean? Because he's too powerful, mm. he shouldn't have been on anyone's side. He should have said, literally said, "In the, I'm, I'm too smart for. I, I know what happens in every civil war of some yeah, sort, yeah. which would have worked really well." But he explained his stance on the fact that since <laughs> the superheroes, the camera, wink. <laughs> <laughs> since the superheroes developed, so did the supervillains. Oh yeah, that's so true. That, that's so he was like so that's why he agreed with Tony, yeah. but he didn't really get involved in the fights like he could. Have. He was trying to just sort of subdue people stop people he wasn't trying to take people out yeah that's fair that's fair what did you just realise 
here's one minor criticism you can take from Ragnarok. Yep. It still has not addressed one of the few problems with the MCU in that there's no good villains for more than one film. All of the, like Hello was one of the best ones that they've had. She's still dead now, by the looks of things. Loki's probably the only villain that I can think of who's appeared multiple times, and you can even argue he's just an anti-hero now. He's not a villain. He's he's just Loki's an Vegeta. Yeah, he's a face, basically. Yeah. And I think that's because of the popularity of the actor. Definitely. In the same way that Coulson became quite a staple thing because of how he yeah. got on with the other cast and well, how popular he was. Be talking about Vegeta, because I'm a huge fanboy, Vegeta was meant to die at the end of that whole v- Vegeta arc. Or was he? But the, fan, aye, but the fans loved him. So yeah, that, that original voice as well. Oh, yeah. Like, from the original redubbed English version, then they re-redubbed it. But he's, he's the best. He is easily the best, yeah. Which is kind of weird because he, he's like that gruffer, more aggressive type. Yeah. Whereas the anti-hero in this case is like the kind of more prissier of the two. Yeah. Which is interesting yeah. that some people yeah. kind of gravitate towards but him. To, but to me, Goku, uh, Goku and Vegeta, the reason Vegeta's better is because Goku is just anime Superman. He's yes. perfect. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, this is where Vegeta is everything Goku is. But with the character flaws, I'm like, yeah, he's the Batman to Goku's Superman. Yeah, yeah. he's and he's it's like Wolverine and yeah, and Cyclops yeah, is a bad that's... example. Cyclops seems to have the shittiest power, I think, yeah. but has seems to do really well with it mm. for some reason. Sorry, it's because of his mind, um, as well. It's not the best mind, but he's got a good tactical mind and a good sort of leader mind to start with. He starts to lose it a bit with his uh, ideologies and visions of. Like he starts to become Magneto, movement basically. With, yeah, like a peaceful Magneto. Yeah. Um, the Mjolnir question will never be answered. No, no one else apart from Vision will have lifted that. Because remember, Cap made it wobble, and it, you almost thought that was a precursor oh, to Cap yeah. lifting it at some point. Yeah. And I honestly thought Cap was going to be Ultron with it uh, so originally. Well, see in the trailers where it showed you all of them lying defeated mm-hmm. and Cap's shield broken. Yeah. And it turned out that was just a vision in Tony Stark's mind. Mm-hmm. I was sure Ultron would have just laid waste to all of them. And it was like, yeah, nobody can defeat me. And then Cap is pure like, whomsoever is worthy, bang, lifts it up. And it, the whole place fucking pops. And you're like, oh my fucking God. And I, I think that's maybe what would have made Avengers 2 as good as Avengers 1. It would have just been such a good moment. Because they had teased it earlier in the film. It Do would... you want a spoiler from the current comics? Well, I think in the comics, Cap's lifted the hammer before, but I don't know if this is current comics or... Very previous, current, like very last current. month. Um, I'm okay with it. I just want to say that I totally agree with you in terms of Age of Ultron. What they sh- Age of Ultron should have been the Empire Strikes Back version. It should have been darker. And they, 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 yes. they teased it in the trailers, then they took out the creepiness of James Spader, made him into this campy robot, and yeah, they should have had something like that. The puppet master like that. thing that was going on in the trailer. It's nice, was, right? Was, yes. so, yeah. Oh. There are no strings, and all. I was just. And like, it, it was still used in that, but it lost its effect because he was comical. Wait, it was, was James Spader being yeah. Tony Stark. Yeah, and that, it was just shit. And I get why they did that because he had this unwilling replication of Tony Stark in his personality. Yeah. Um, it, but it played its way right in between that kind of tone of film, like Ragnarok, mm-hmm. and we want to be quite dark, and it hit neither. Yes. And it's like, yeah, you, should have, got just got you should have made there. a decision and stuck to it. Yeah. For looking back at the start of that film, when the Avengers are wrecking all the Hydra agents, mm. was there any need for all those Avengers to be there? Couldn't they have just sent Thor in? Like, just Thor? Thor. Thor. But yeah. Stark needed to be there for the Even if, if you watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., yeah, I know, you, I know you guys don't, but if you watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they can handle that shit. You don't need Thor and all of them there agents yeah, of shield are more than capable of dealing with that what what's ghost rider like in agents of, agents of shield i think agents of because he's to- that's super canon like as much as the defenders are oh, part yeah. of this universe like- a- agents of shield was very very poor up until halfway through season one it's got better and better and better 
every single season since. And season four is now actually a damn good show. Now, yeah, you might need to plod through seasons one and two to get there. But it's like with DS9, with Star Trek DS9, yeah? Mm. I had always been told, yeah, one and two are not the best. But by the time you get to the Dominion War, the whole, and by the time Cisco grows his beard, that's the, that's everything's going to be worth it. Okay, yeah, so know, anyway, you're saying, know, you're saying, buddy. What does Eminem do? Eminem raps. Oh, you need to wrap it up. <laughs> Didn't you just ah. ask, a, say a, ask a question or say something a second ago? You'd ask the question about... I'm, I'm oh, you said there's a spoiler from the current comic book. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah So now like... me and you will just, we'll maybe just arrange a... Range something on the side a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Let this fair play. Couldn't right. care. Couldn't care. Right. Let, let us make this I know, it's just in the current comics. I mind I was telling you about Secret Empire and how Cap was a Hydra agent. Yes, yes. And had taken over the world, basically. Will this spoil any more of Secret Empire for me? Because I'm about to read Secret Wars. Secret Wars is miles away from Secret Empire. Sweet. Um, so basically, what happens is Good Cap is pulled out of his consciousness. By the cosmic cube because he's always been there um so good cap ends up in the real world as cosmic well cosmic cube uh the Kobic, it's basically oh, right, okay right and um, the one that rewrote cat's history in the first place yeah, it yeah. never fully replaced him it kind of replicated him instead um so they end up you have good cat bad cat fighting bad caps armored up though with iron it's man like good, good cop bad cop yeah <laughs> and uh, bad but bad one's got hydra cap has got um like Iron Man style armor on as well. So he's like Azrael. He's, he's pretty powered up. And then Thor's hammers just, it's been put down at some point. No one's picked it up. No one's been able to pick it up. Good Even cap, Jane yeah. Foster can't pick it up. Of course, Bad Cap's been able to pick it up because Mjolnir's considered Captain America to be worthy for all his past actions and stuff. And Good Cap just grabs it, poof, knocks him out of the armor with it. It's that's what I was just going to say is yeah even now Cap's still able to pick up the hammer almost yeah. as easily as Thor but we will never see that in the MCU so just... that would have I think that would have been a great way for Cap to go out if he goes out fighting Swinging. Thanos with the hammer yeah like just trying his darndest with the hammer and the shield and just yeah. going at him with all the goodness of yeah I really think Thanos needs to kill one of them I've now still... realised he's going to kill Vision. But when I say kill one of them, I really mean a top tier character. Yeah. I mean Iron Man, Cap, Thor or Hulk. I was thinking I... about this today. Yeah, he needs he needs to kill one of them. I'll tell you who he needs to kill. Black Widow. Good cat, Black bad cat. Widow. What? So that, so that Hulk goes fucking Raj or... Because no one would expect him to kill Black Widow. I don't think they would allow it. No, they probably wouldn't. Um, it's just that whole man killing a woman kind of thing. It's which is why there's diversify. Why equality does not exist. The, yeah, but there's some things that would, regardless of what you say, would just make people feel uncomfortable. Like the, there's you you're not seeing the UFC, bra. Yeah, you know, there's just that sort of inbred thing that makes a guy go no women shouldn't be treated like that by but, but, but she can fight them on TV they would they're do always it. considered it's because it's a Hollywood movie I yeah, think because in Game of Thrones for example they wouldn't think twice no if for no the they story, would now they would now because yeah. now it's Hollywood yeah well yeah sorry if George R. R. Martin were writing Avengers 3 Scarlet Widow would be dead in minute 2 <laughs> but can you imagine Scarlet <laughs> Widow you're getting tired as well but can you imagine what Black that? Widow. I was thinking <laughs> Scarlet Witch. Who makes that part... Scarlet Johansson. <clears throat> I was just trying to think. Oh, imagine you morph those two. I thought you were being being clever there. No, no. A- apart from that, working with my overarching theme for the show today, um, I think it would make a lot of sense because how fucking gutted would the rest of the bros be that Black Widow got killed, and it gives you the opportunity for Hulk to almost consume himself. With rage, yeah, and p- pummel him, pummel Thanos like hugely. Yeah, he would. That would be one way for them to have Hulk almost kill him. I'm just th- my only slight concern with. They're not going to do that, obviously, because with... she's got a vagina, and because you yeah. know. 
from the things you say. I, I have this with all of these superhero films is how do you truly depict Thanos' true power and yet still make it realistic when the Avengers They've got to raise the stakes, but they've got to win. Do they have to win? Well, they've, they've, they've just... Win at a cost. And that's why they need to kill because someone. There, was yeah, there has story, to be the noble sacrifice. There was a thing. comic story once where it was like the end of the universe and it's just Thanos standing in the dark. Right, and the panel's just dark and he explains how he destroyed the universe basically and then he's like but I'm, I'm kind of regretting it now because there, there's nothing there's just nothing that's it and then Adam Warlock yes appears and well they were making Adam Warlock at the end of Guardians, Guardians 2, 2 yeah. so yeah. presumably he will pull it he will fly into it along with Wonder Girl? No, Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. Captain which Marvel. is, I wish they just. I wish, Carol Danvers. Yeah, I don't like the name Captain Marvel. Also, the girl they've chosen for her. Who is it? Brie Larson. I, oh, think right. it, I think it is. Mm-hmm. She doesn't look like Carol Dan. Yet. My Carol Dan. What? Yet. Give her time. Maybe facially she doesn't, but once you get the hair right, you might be like, actually. Just yeah. even. I don't know. She's going to take that gym. Carl Danvers. They all do. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know they do, but she just like her face is not. It's girl next door, and Carl da- Danvers has not got that girl next door face. Hence, who's drawing it? No, I don't really don't think so. <laughs> I've never seen her in, depicted in any other way than like. I've spoken to you about this before, Stovey, but have you ever heard of the Hawkeye Initiative? No, I'm guessing it's a site online which basically looks at. Uh, comic books right. and it just says hmm take a look at this pose that you've drawn a female character in just to see if this is overly sexualised let's draw Hawkeye in the exact same <laughs> pose <laughs> and it's you like it it's point. like chest pure puffed out and he's like there's always a speech bubble or sticking out, oh, or sticking out. Yeah, yeah. and there's always a speech bubble of him just going empowerment or yeah. something like that <laughs> and it's just absolutely brilliant there's a similar one where it's got a picture of a dude like basically naked with like a couple of bits of metal and like a bit <laughs> stick like a bit of metal over his dick and like a helmet and it's like um, nice armor, bro. Or something like like manga, uh, manga warrior, done in female style. Uh, and you're like, oh yeah. <laughs> so let's uh, rate it and let's finish up. Yes, cause it's really please, getting late. Because I am. You're I'm dying. Up at like half six. That's it. Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep looking at Hawkeye okay, initiative. Yes. So, you want me to go first? Or? Yeah, go first. Oh, see, I really, really enjoyed it. It needs a second viewing to give it a fair rating, like it did with the other films. Um, but based on that first viewing, I mean, I'm looking for like a, a nine, eight and a half, somewhere about that region. Uh, well, there's yeah. hardly anything wrong with the film. Like we were nitpicking a little bit of CGI, oh, yeah. which the only thing I can. I'm going to stick with a nine. You're going to go nine? He's yeah. going nine. What are you going with? I would go the same. It wasn't flawless because of the CGI and because of the fact that once again we come out of a Marvel film without another villain. You know that's. Mm-hmm. a repeated villain but then that's kind of a cool thing because why wouldn't you get why wouldn't you defeat the villain and that is that's a problem in many TV shows comic books and, and such it's why would you just fucking beat Skeletor yeah. just yeah. beat him I want them beat I don't want them beat first time every time it's a bit I just think in things like Game of Thrones it was so satisfying when Joffrey choked to death because he was a little dick and he'd been a little dick for so fucking long. That's Whereas true. if he'd only been a dick for three episodes, you don't hate him as yeah. much. And it's the same with Ramsay and all of these kind of ones, yeah. Ramsay never hit the mark for me. I know you I know you've said that before, yeah. But yeah. like the point being, the longer you give someone a build up, the more it, it so But with, then it seems Thanos, like a part one and part two, part three. Yeah. You see what and I, mean? I know they can't win Hollywood because then you just get into the whole Oh, but they're just trying to spin this franchise out into as many films as they can. But yeah, I, like I mean, with the we're, Turtles we're films, Shredder came back again, and I yeah. wanted that. But then it's similar sort of thing. But so to you're answer, to answer your question though, nine. We're nitpicking. It you're going with the nine. Else. You're yeah. going with nine right now for me. I don't think it's quite nine and a half because that was Logan, mm-hmm. but it's really fucking good. Right now, I'm going to give it a nine and a quarter if we even do that. We're not doing quarters. Not doing nope. quarters. You're going to have to make a tough call. Nine or 9.5? 9.5. Going for it. 
It was so fucking good. Yeah, it was. It was good. so fucking good. Anyway, that's all we've got time for. All we've got time for, just an hour and 40, which is about 40 minutes longer than what you probably needed. Yep. You'll be tired tomorrow. I am sorry. I am up in six hours. Do your sign off. Thanks for listening, guys. You find us at the usual place, abovekeepodcastblog.wordpress.com. Find me at dstoby. Over to you. I don't have half as many tags as that, but Kill Vanilla signing out. For this oh one. my god, yeah, yeah, it's Kill Vanilla, of course it is. And you'll find myself at the Buff Geek on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to speak to me, hit me up on Twitter. That's probably the most likely place. And big shout out to the Podder and family guys out there too. Absolutely, always a always a pleasure, never a chore. Mm-hmm. Hashtag the Buff Geek Podcast. Piss off, you ghost!